Mark Doty, and this is the Therabox ET4.2. First, I'm going to give you a little bit of history. In 1928, Maurice Martineau took heterodyning oscillators, and instead of controlling them with capacitance fields, like for example, Leon Theremin's theremin, he put them in a box and allowed you to control them via a wire. Under the wire was painted a piano keyboard to allow you to, con to choose pitches. So by moving the wire back and forth, you were able to control the pitches of the oscillator, resulting in one of the first fully electronic musical instruments. Now, where Maurice Martineau went that Leon Theremin didn't with his device was Maurice Martineau's device, the Ond Martineau, allowed you timbral control. And that's kind of what we have going on here. You control the frequency by basically pointing at a piano note. And then you have the timbral control up here, which actually resembles more instruments that started in around 1964. So you have this great combination of a very traditional electronic music interface coupled with sort of more synthesizer related controls and it results in a very expressive electronic musical instrument. Okay, if you know me, you know my demos usually start with the oscillators, right? Well, this demo is a little bit different, and why? Because this is a performance device, and understanding this as a device is going to require me to start with the envelope. Where is the envelope control, you might say? Because we've got the filter here, reverb, volume, Oscillator, sync. What? No envelope? Actually, the envelope is right here. It has an envelope for each oscillator. Now, you might be saying, what the heck are you talking about? But you have the simplest envelope control in the history of envelope control right here. That is to say, how hard you press these very comfortable and expressive and sensitive wooden buttons controls the level of volume that this device puts out. These are amplitude controls. These are envelope, manual envelope generators that you control with your fingers. And they're very similar to the On Martino. Well, not very similar. They're the same idea as what you would find on the On Martino, which had a button that you would press to control the volume. Let me demonstrate. The deeper I push the button down, the louder the sound gets. And if I had really expressive muscle control, I'd be able to do this very fluidly and beautifully. And as these are envelope controls, you then have the ability to control the volume of the sound in real time. So like if you want a slow attack, you press slowly. You have the ability to decide where you stop. You don't have to push it all the way down. Um, if you want a sudden attack, press it down suddenly. If you want a, a soft attack and then a hard attack, hard attack, hmm. never noticed that before. So you can see you have an incredible amount of control over the volume of the sound. It's just like an ADSR, except for your finger is controlling the attack, the decay, the sustain, and the release. Although technically it doesn't have a release because release is predicated upon removing your hand from the device. And if you remove your hand from the device, there's not gonna be any sound. But you can control the release in the same way that you can control the decay. And that is, you get to shape the sound how it should sound. Doesn't matter when you pull your finger away or whatever, you get to create the sound you want by how you press the button down. And there are two um, of these. One controls oscillator one, one controls oscillator two. You can see I'm alternating between them. You can press them all at the same time. Um, and as you probably saw, you can alternate or 
you can define what volume you want, depending on how good the muscles are in your fingers. I mean, it doesn't take a lot of muscle, but it does take some muscle control. So if you're a musician who's used to playing a musical instrument, you can tell that allows you some really incredible things. And when we get into the oscillator, you can make a lot of different choices about what notes or what waveforms those oscillators are playing. Before we get there, we're going to go on to the keyboard, which is usually not something I go too in depth in, but in this case, we're going to. Here we have the pitch control. This is the volume control. Here's the pitch control. You put your finger into this ring and there's a rubber band here, which allows a snug fit. And basically you just point at what note you want. I'm pointing at a G. That's where it was. Or a C. Or B. So you get to decide what the frequency is by what note you're pointing at. And they've helped you do this. This is a somewhat slippery surface, but there are divots on each of these notes allowing you to actually get some tactile feedback about, you know, where the note is and how many notes you've traveled past and etc. if you're not, you know, looking very closely. And so you can just play this like any keyboard instrument, except for you're controlling your envelope with your own finger and you're controlling the pitch with this ring. Now you may have heard a pitch variance there. That was my fault. If you don't keep your finger perpendicular to like, for example, this wood line, you're actually changing the pitch. Listen, I'm still touching the C, but, uh, I'm pulling the ring away from where I'm touching the C. So that's a thing you have to get used to. What you don't have to get used to is where you land because I thought this would probably change the pitch too, moving your finger back and forth, but that has no effect, which I think is really impressive. So yes, uh, it is your goal to choose the notes you want and articulate them with the other hand. You can do a thing that I was kind of doing. You can, you can tap them, which helps you feel like maybe you're playing a little bit more. Um, you can see I am not employing any sort of finesse over here with the articulation buttons, which is a little bit sad, but this is a musical instrument. This is not messing around. This is a thing that you learn to sort of express musically your thoughts and feelings by teaching your muscles to do what you hear in your head. And you can provide bravado, bravado. You can provide bravado, but you can also provide vibrato. I'm obviously doing a theremin here. You can make theremin like noises. Woo! <laughs> 